Hospital of Insurance and Risk Management. After a successful career with major insurers in California, Connecticut, Minnesota, and Illinois, he returned here to Utah to found a highly successful Utah-based property, Casualty Insurance Company, where he served as their company president for eight years. He also served as president of Utah Claims Managers Council. Jeff is an alumni graduate of UVU. Woo! 1984. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually Utah Technical College back then. So we were just a lot of fun. Where, <laughs> where he was an active, he was active in student government, wrote for the school newspaper, and participated in several campus clubs. He then obtained a BS in organizational communication from the University of Utah and an MBA from the North Central or from North Central near Chicago and Illinois. Jeff's wife Carrie is from Witter, California, and they are the parents of three great teenagers and a rambunctious Bichon Freeze, it's a dog. Oh, no. Does anybody know what a Bichon Freeze is? Frise? All right. Jeff enjoys skiing, hiking, and exploring every inch of Utah. So welcome, Jeff Taylor, everyone. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's a pretty good obituary. I like that. <laughs> it is so great to be here with you guys. <clears throat> Let's try that again. There we go. It's Bichon Frise, for those that know. Is that the right way to say it? Bichon Frise? Okay. Hello, hello, hello. I'll just keep talking. Thank you for that introduction. I'm so happy to be here with you. My name is Jeff Taylor, and it's going to be nice to spend the next, the next six hours with you. So make sure your seat's ver She thought it was true. She's like, six hours with this guy. Oh, no, what are we going to do? Now, we're going to be with you for just about an hour. I'd like to thank Dr. Jackson for inviting uh, Scott Wood and myself here today. Um, I tell you guys, this is an exciting, exciting program. I cannot believe how powerful this Center for the Advancement of Leadership is. When I was going to school here, back then it was called Utah Tech. I mean, we didn't have the Sorensen Center, we didn't have the engineering building. They had an institute and a building over here. I don't think we had a logo. And I don't think we had a mascot. And if we did, it would have been a monkey wrench, and the logo would have been measure twice, cut once. You know, because it really was, it was a trade school. And uh, then they, they opened a business school, and the business school was such a blast to be involved with. I got involved with some of the business programs. Back then, about the only thing they had was DECA at the college level. But we had an awesome DECA program here. Competed nationals, won, won, won a bunch of gold medals, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But to see this program that you guys are involved in now is so, so impressive. You know what? Stick with it. I've been in industry for about 20 years, hiring people like you out of college to come and work for the companies that I work for. And I'll tell you, impressed with some of them, not so impressed with some of them, but one of the things that they lacked was leadership. And so the opportunity to get involved in this program and learn some of these principles, I guarantee it's going to make you a better person out in the workplace, whether that's profit, not for profit, or it's just at home. So I congratulate you for doing this. This is really, really awesome. This is probably one of the, the, the best groups of college students that I've had an opportunity to ever speak to. And let me tell you, I feel just a little bit like the quarterback at a college. Story goes something like this. The college was competing for the national championship, but their star quarterback was failing two subjects and thereby was ineligible to play in the big game on Saturday. The two subject that he was failing was logic. They don't take logic so much anymore. It's kind of an argumentation, a theory. He was failing logic and mathematics. So the groups got together, uh, the, the administration, all the coaches had a big huddle up and they said, oh, you know, what are we going to do? Quarterback's failing these two courses. We have got to get him through one of these courses to make him eligible. So they, hired, they, they, they brought in a Jesuit professor to sit down and to try and be his personal tutor. They thought they'd get some divine you know, guidance from above. So they bring the professor and he sits down with the quarterback and he says, son, we've got to win the national championship. You're flunking these two courses, logic and mathematics. We know you can't get through logic, so we're going to try and get you through mathematics. 
Okay? He said, hey, yeah, okay, great. So he says, okay, so here's the problem. There are three flies on the kitchen table. Two flies fly away. How many flies are there on the kitchen table? And the quarterback grabs his head real hard, thinks about it for a while, and he says, well, well there's none, there's zero. The professor says, no, take your time, son. <laughs> take your time. There's three flies on the kitchen table. Two flies fly away. How many does that leave on the kitchen table? Uh, quarterback, just this time, he's just sweating. Uh, he thinks about it, none. The professor says, this is glory be to God. He says, how can you be so stupid? Three flies take away two flies. How many flies are on the kitchen table? And the quarterback thinks about it, and he says, says you know, but professor, he says, if, if two of the flies fly away, wouldn't the other fly away too? The professor thinks about it for a second, and he says, glory be to God. You failed mathematics, but you've passed logic. You can play in Saturday's game. <laughs> so somebody will do anything to win, won't they? You know, guys, today, if, if, uh, if Scott and I don't give you any mathematics, if we don't give you any formulas, if we don't give you any uh, mechanisms or metrics or mathematics, hopefully Scott and I can appeal to some of the logic of leadership. And I've kind of labeled my uh, presentation today just lessons from the trench. I've been out there knocking myself against the wall and having some successes and some failures for 20 years in the insurance industry. And I just want to share with you a couple of ideas, a couple of principles and concepts uh, that, have, that I've learned that if I can pass on to you, and some of you may have mastered these, and some of you may be working on them, okay? But here's a principle. We need to be reminded more than we need to be informed. I'm not sure there's anything I can say today that's really going to inform you on something new. Now, Scott over here might. I'll introduce Scott in a minute. He's got something really neat that, that we want to show to you. But we need to be reminded more than we need to be informed. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead. We've got about three principles we're going to try and cover today. If we run out of time, we'll get to two principles. But let, let's see where we go. What I'd like everybody to do is a little exercise here. I know you've got a bunch of laptop computers out here, but what I'd like you to do is just to find a, a partner, somebody sitting next to you. There's, there's three here. Maybe you could hook up with one of them. And we're going to do two little exercises. The first time, I want you to walk up to this person or, 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 or turn to them or stand up, anything that you want to do, and I want you to go ahead and greet them as if they're really not very important. So quickly pick somebody, and let's see you stand up and introduce yourself as if, you're, if, as if it's not very important. Important. Okay, on your marks, get set, go. 